Hell yeah, Skinner. Sorry about that, Corsi. This demonstration will show you what is needed to make a Fallout inspired footlocker. The original has a lid attached with two hinges. The lid is held shut by a clasp on each side and locked with a hasp in the middle. Tools can hurt and maim you. Read and understand all safety instructions included with your tools. Wear safety glasses. Keep fingers and other body parts clear of blades, bits, and sharp objects. Keep your workspace clean and organized too. I'm not responsible for the harm you do to yourself or others. In addition to basic hand tools such as a hammer, screwdriver, chisel, carpenter square and a measuring tape, the following power tools will be needed. An electric drill, a jigsaw, a table saw, a router with various bits, a belt sander, a palm sander. A foot locker is not a piece of static furniture, it's meant to travel. This means that the joints will need to be strong. There are a number of different styles to choose from, and in the end, strength might not even be the most important factor. For instance, dovetails are very strong, but they require specialized tools and jigs to create. If you don't have these jigs, it doesn't matter how strong they are, you're not going to be able to use them. A stronger joint, requiring the use of a table saw or router, is the rabbit joint. The rabbit joint will be used later for the tray. The finger joint is very strong, but requires a lot of time and or specialized tools and jigs. My idea was a compromise, which I'll call the thumb joint. Only three fingers are used. A link to a detailed bill of material will be provided. For the most part, the wood used is poplar. Poplar will cost a little more than pine, or what they call white wood, but it's much easier to work with and finishes much better. In many cases, I used what I had on hand, or what I could get cheap or free. Mark your cuts. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Straight cuts are important. Use a miter saw, either manual or electric. Here are the sides of the body and the ends cut to length. There should be two of each. The width of a 1x12 is actually 11 and a quarter inches. 
This works out perfectly for making thumb joints. If you divide the width by three, you come up with three and three quarter inches. Use a carpenter square to mark the depth of the thumbs. Here are the thumbs marked out for cutting. If you're going to use a handsaw, you can begin cutting. If you have access to a table saw, things will go much quicker. Even so, a handsaw is useful for making the final cuts. Removing the stock from the middle of the board is a little different. A table saw will come in handy, along with a jigsaw. Before gluing, make sure the pieces fit together, not too loose and not too tight. This is what happens when the joint is forced. After some sanding, chiseling, and adjusting, the pieces fit together squarely. When gluing the joints, it's important to get the corners square and remove any warping from the boards. Rail clamps, pipe clamps, and corner clamps will be needed. The more you have, the easier it will be. Let the glue dry overnight. Don't rush any curing steps in this project. Be patient. After the glue dries, the joints can have screws added to them. The screws will need to be piloted and countersunk. A countersinking pilot bit works best for this task. Add screws. Make them snug, but don't over tighten. With the sides glued and the screws in place, use a handsaw to trim any excess thumbs that might be sticking out. This is the flush cut joint. Sand the corners flush with the belt sander. The bottom panel sits inside a rabbit cut into the body of the box. A router works best for this type of work. In fact, I can't think of any other tool that will do the job. Obviously, the final depth of the rabbit should be the same as the piece of wood used for the bottom panel. This is the finished rabbit, going all the way around the inside of the body. Measure the length and width of the inside of the rabbit. This will be the length and width of the bottom panel. Since the cut panel will have squared corners, and the rabbit has rounded corners, the panel will need to be marked and rounded. If you can find a washer the same diameter as the rabbit, you can use it as a template to mark the bottom panel. Here is the bottom panel dry fitted. Once the bottom is in place, it will be almost impossible to sand from the inside of the box, so sand it before putting it in place. But here is the bottom glued and tacked in place. The frame for the lid is butt jointed. The procedure is the same. Measure, cut, glue, and clamp, and then add countersunk screws at the corners. Corner clamps and rail clamps are used to hold everything in place while the glue dries. The lid will need a rabbit just like the bottom did, but in this case to hold the top panel. Here is the lid frame with the optional reinforcements in place. The plywood panel has already been glued and tacked in place. Cracks, gaps, and screw holes need to be filled. Because the foot locker is made to be moved about, wood putty is not the best choice as a filler because it cracks. Instead, epoxy is used for filling the cracks between the frame and the lid. Use enough epoxy that it overflows the crack you're trying to fill. It will be sanded smooth after it hardens. Partially hardened epoxy will gum up your sandpaper. Let it cure overnight. The hinge I ended up using in this build is called a piano hinge. This was wrong. Recall that the original used two hinges. I already had the piano hinge, so I used it anyways. In either case, the lid and base will need to have some material removed to make room for the hinge. A simple jig is used as a guide for the router. The router is equipped with a straight bit and a collar to follow the guide. The center of the jig is marked to allow it to be aligned to a corresponding mark on the center of the lid and on the base. The jig includes stops at each end to make sure that the relief is the same length as the hinge. The collar allows the router to follow the jig without cutting into it. Here's the router, the collar, a straight cut bit, and the jig with one of the stops showing. Here's the channel for the hinge with the jig still in place. The rounded corners need to be squared up using a chisel or a utility knife. Here's the hinge installed. At this point, all screws and nail holes should be filled with epoxy. Once the epoxy hardens, sand it smooth. Here is the filled and rough sanded footlocker. The clasp and each hasp get installed next. All screw holes should be pre-drilled and then remove them, along with the hinge, for final sanding and painting. A thorough sanding will make the finish smooth and even. The color of the footlocker varies in the game from a mottled black to a gray, so this one's getting a coat of gray. Once the paint is dry and cured, the clasp, latch, and hinge can be replaced. To stop the lid from flapping all the way back, add a short piece of chain connecting the lid to the body. It goes without saying that the chain is on the inside of the box. Also visible 
is the rail that the inside tray will rest on. The length of the tray is one half the length of the inside of the footlocker. This allows the tray to be slid to one side or the other so you can get what's stored underneath it. The width of the tray is the same as the width of the inside of the footlocker. The wood used is a 1x4. I ripped the sides down to 3 inches. The ends were left their original height. This is to allow for the incorporation of handles later. The bottom of the tray will be a 1 quarter inch piece of plywood. A dado cut and the sides and the ends will hold the bottom in place. Here's what it looks like after the dado cut. The ends of the tray are going to have handles routed into them. The first step is to cut curved OGs on the corners. The bottoms of the OGs stop where the sides begin. Using a half round bit in the router table, again with a jig, a handle is cut into the sides. Here's the tray glued and nailed together. Once the paint is dry and cured, the clasp, latch, and hinge can be replaced. Except for one thing, I wasn't recording. Are you ready? Action. <laughs>